Joining us here on set is new core CEO Leon Tapalian. Leon, it's so great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit with the fact that you did uh, put out that forecast for the second quarter that was so much stronger than the street uh, anticipated. Um, part of where you're seeing that is uh, the steel products segment is uh, is continuing to deliver some some strong results. I guess just walk me through where the demand is coming from. Yeah, I think it's a few pictures. One is the, um, you know, the investment over new core over the last several years about 14 billion. So we're coming to the close of uh, a very significant campaign. The non-rest construction has been incredibly resilient really since COVID hit, and that remains incredibly robust. Towers and structures, the energy sector, renewables, all very um, you know, positive signs in the marketplace. And again, is the largest steel and most diversified and cleanest steel producer. Um, Nucor is really um, capitalizing on that and aimed to continue to deliver the uh, the needs of our customers. $14 billion in investments. I want to get into that a little more detail, but yeah. but first, um, when, you, when you do talk about non-residential uh, and infrastructure spending, I mean, we've certainly seen uh, the policy, the government policy here in the U.S. and, and the spending going towards that. But I, I wonder... I wonder how you think about this trend. How much of it is that policy? How much of it is nearshoring and reshoring that we're seeing take place? How much of it is also tariffs that went to effect a number of years ago now? Yeah, they, the tariffs went into effect 232 in uh, the spring of 2018. And so they've been around for a while, but really they were a bridge, a bridge to better uh, trade deals with different nations, USMCA, chorus agreement with Korea, Brazil, and obviously we're working on the global arrangement with um, Europe right now. So. That's certainly a, a benefit. But the other part of that is, um, as you mentioned, is the Chips and Science Act, infrastructure spending, as well as the IRA. Those three pieces of legislation alone are going to account for somewhere between six and eight million tons of steel annually. It's a significant amount. And again, Nucor stands at the ready. If you think about Chips and Science Act, for example, $55 billion legislation, today there are 34 semiconductor facilities on the books to be built, totaling $374 billion of investment. That is a massive, singular investment in the uh, in the economy and reshoring. And again, as one of the cleanest steel makers on the planet, we're poised and positioned really well to be able to serve them in the end markets that they serve. You talked on the last earnings call about Nucor's history of operating profitably yes. during downturns. It kind of stands in contrast to a lot of tech and other industries that sort of overbuilt during that period. Talk for a bit about what you've done over the past couple of years and how that positions you, what you've invested in versus not. Yeah, it, it starts with our A-word mission statement, to grow the core, the core of who we are, expand beyond, and live our culture. So we're investing in new plants in Lexington, North Carolina, for example, on the Atlantic coast, and a new micromel technology rebar, and that will facilitate the build-out in that region. We're building the largest sheet facility we've ever built with the largest project in the state of West Virginia, a new sheet mill in that location that will really be well poised to serve the energy, automotive, um, in, in different uh, agriculture, heavy equipment, that sector. But the other side is the expand beyond, moving into adjacencies and those um, steel-centric businesses that operate somewhat out of the cyclicality of steel to provide a much more stability uh, of our earnings cycle through cycle. And then the last piece is we don't get over our skis. We're very uh, prudent with our accounting and how we think about growth, how we think about uh, stewarding our valuable shareholder capital and don't ever get uh, too far out. We want to maintain a triple B, double A1 credit rating, and that's very important to us. And, and taking care of that is, uh, is, is part of our job. Historically, steelmaking has always been a, dare I say, dirty business. And you're talking about, you know, making steel in a, in a more clean way and how some of the billions of dollars you've invested is going towards that process. What does it entail? You know, one of the advantages Nucor has is a recycler. We are the largest recycler in the continent and the fifth largest in the entire world. So, you know, the ESG movement over the last several years is something that we've been doing for a very long time. And so we're starting from an incredible advantage point to this, you know, where we stand now. Other nations and countries and industries are investing billions to arrive where we're at today. So at the end of the, the that whole picture, um, Nucor is not staying where we're at. We're doing things like carbon sequestration and partnerships with ExxonMobil. We're investing in technologies around the world to make sure we can deliver a net zero product to our uh, major end customers that need that steel today and those that are going to need it tomorrow. 
So how does that factor in with your view, not just on the domestic economy, where we see some of these secular trends taking place, but also globally, when we know China is not only the biggest consumer, but also biggest producer of steel. And there's a lot of concern about uh, growth there and how that dictates this market more broadly. Yeah, we've been in an overcapacity situation for many, many years and will remain in that situation for a long time. So how we think about um, border adjustment tax, how we think about making sure that the products are coming in to build our renewable energies, the solar, the wind farms, uh, the new nuclear plants, the SMRs that are coming online in the future are built with the greenest deals in the world. And so, you know, China has 1.3 billion tons of capability in many of those, uh, millions of those tons are looking for a home, and that home is going to look for the strongest economy in the world, which is the United States. So we've got to be uh, strong advocates in D.C. We spend a lot of time, uh, Secretary Raimondo, Catherine Tyre, USTR, understand our industry, understand uh, the trade remedies that are being looked at, and um, we have great confidence that they're going to continue to make sure that we create a level playing field, not a free trade agreement, but fair trade.